Christmas time, the holidays. Is this the way they end for me here in this place? A mental hospital, they call it. <laughs> That's a fancy name, that is, but I know a better. The bug house, a place where they lock you up and then throw away the key. And now they've got me, too. Me, Fred Clanton. Fred Clanton, Fred Clanton, is that really my name? Oh, everything's so mixed up. These grounds, these buildings, they're all so dark. Everything's dark, even the sky. I'll never get out. That George, he's turned them all against me. Even Betty, they keep talking about me. Why won't they let me alone? them take me in there. I'll never get out. Oh, God, what will happen to me now? Fred now. What happens to all of them? The men and women from every walk of life who each year pass through doors like this into the mental hospitals of our land. Here, in the story of Fred Clanton and the typical Oklahoma State Hospital to which he came, the spotlight focuses on these people. Patients are old, and often theirs is a tragedy of hospitals such as this. The tragedy of fathers and mothers too old to work, rejected by their own children, classed as senile and committed to mental hospitals because there's nowhere else for them to go. Yet, given proper care, they can still adjust, make new friends to ease the passing of years. Some patients are disturbed, unable to care for themselves in normal life situations. Others are physically as well as mentally ill. Many are capable of limited adjustment, able to work at varied tasks within the hospital. There's the veteran returned from years of service overseas. The farmer, who had never set foot outside his home county till he came here. Deterioration, chronic conditions, limit hope for some. Others may go home tomorrow. Meanwhile, they're living here. 3,200 men and women all gathered together in a modern mental institution, a city in itself, complete with every facility for effective treatment. Though shortages in hospital personnel do exist, patients are secure and comfortable, and most of them are happy. For while mere custodial care can never be enough, a favorable environment and human comforts are essential in any therapeutic system. For most, meals are served cafeteria style. Food is plentiful and good, and investment in patient health. Just baking the bread for 3,000 people is a man-sized job. Above all, though, these kitchen chores offer patients work, the therapy of busy hands. The laundry, more chances for patients to focus on specific realities outside themselves. First step along the road that leads to recovery and release. 
The patients tell you the power plant smokestack is 525 feet tall. They seem to take a personal pride in it. Maybe because power is so important here. The sick must have heat and light. There's water to be pumped and food cooked and laundry washed. Patients must be housed, and today's new hospital buildings center on human needs and comfort. Whether they provide living quarters or treatment facilities, whether they're for convalescents, older people, the tubercular, veterans, or occupational therapy, these modern structures are part of a long-range integrated plan to improve conditions for all who live within these grounds. Special units provide homes for nurses and attendants, for they too play a vital role in helping patients to regain health. In addition to the regular staff, student nurses come here to learn to recognize and care for the mentally ill. There are lakes for fishing. The hospital farm cuts operating costs provides fresh truck and dairy products. And the familiar scenes, the work, help make patients from rural areas feel at home. They come from all sorts of homes, these patients, all kinds of backgrounds. But somewhere along the line, life became too much for them. Some apply for voluntary admission to the hospital. One of the three procedures by which residents may enter a state mental institution in Oklahoma. Many former patients return of their own free will when new troubles assail them. All applicants for voluntary admission are held a minimum of 15 days for examination before they may be released. Other patients are certified for admission by two competent medical examiners. This is the second method by which patients enter the hospital under the terms of Oklahoma's mental health law. The majority, however, come by court order, committed either by a judge or a six-man jury. This was the case with Fred Clanton. Fred Clanton? Oh, yes. How are you, Fred? Well, I'd be all right if they just left me alone. Well, why don't you tell me about it? You can't fool me. I know you're in with them, too. Fred, I'm going to send you to the hospital. And if you will cooperate with those doctors, I think they'll be able to do you some good. The admitting clerk records Fred's case history as soon as he enters the hospital. Takes care of valuables until he's sufficiently improved to be trusted with them. Escorted to the receiving ward by an attendant, he's bathed and outfitted. He gets a blood test, part of the medical examination given each patient on admission. There's a chest x-ray also, and a spinal fluid test. 